When we eat, food is carried through our body and water and nutrients are extracted from it. It sounds like a simple job, but there's actually a lot that goes on to make it work. Let's learn about the digestive system. A great way to improve your understanding and boost your grades is with my study along workbooks. These are specifically made to use alongside my videos and contain loads of tasks and exam questions. By downloading them, you support me in continuing to make these videos. Get yours now from emmathetici.com. The process of digestion is really important because the food that we eat can't be absorbed immediately. It's too large and insoluble. But digestion breaks it down into smaller soluble molecules, which can then be absorbed into the bloodstream. The GCSE specification assumes knowledge of the digestive system from Key Stage 3 science, so it's important that we recap that first. Let's start by going over what each organ does. To start, we've got the mouth. This takes in the food and mechanically breaks it down with the teeth. It then gets mixed with saliva. Speaking of saliva, over here we've got the salivary glands. These are what produce the saliva. The food then gets swallowed and passed down through the esophagus. This tube transports food to the stomach. The stomach over here is where the food is then churned and mixed with hydrochloric acid. It's important that you learn the name of this acid, so we'll highlight it here. It then passes into the small intestine. Here it continues to digest the food and then absorbs the resulting small soluble molecules. We're going to take a minute to see how the small intestine is adapted for its function, as this is one of the exchange surfaces you need to know. There are three main adaptations to learn. Firstly, the small intestines have a very large surface area. This is achieved by having villi. If you zoom in on the small intestines, you'll see the villi, and each one is called a villus, that's the singular. These are just folds in the surface of the small intestine. The large surface area is also achieved by microvilli. If we zoom in on just one villus, we can see it's covered in loads of microvilli. These folds on the surface of the villi really increase the surface area. Secondly, the small intestines have a good blood supply. There are loads of capillaries supplying the villi. This ensures that any food molecules absorbed are quickly taken away to other tissues, maintaining a steep concentration gradient which results in faster diffusion. This is also covered in the diffusion video. Thirdly, the small intestines have got a short diffusion distance. This is the distance from the food molecules to the bloodstream. As the food molecules don't have to travel very far, this means it's a faster rate of diffusion. Okay, let's carry on with our journey through the digestive system. After the small intestines, the food passes to the large intestines. This is where water is absorbed from any undigested material. We call this undigested material feces and it gets stored in the rectum. Then finally, it gets excreted through the anus. Now we're going to add the new bits that you need to know for GCSE level. So we mentioned the salivary glands produce saliva, but they also produce a digestive enzyme called amylase. You'll learn a lot more about enzymes in the next three videos. The stomach also produces a digestive enzyme and this one is called protease. Now we've got a new organ called the pancreas. This small organ produces all three digestive enzymes, amylase, protease and lipase. And over here we've got the liver. It's a large organ that produces bile. Bile helps by speeding up enzyme action. We will talk a lot more about bile in the video, Factors Affecting Enzymes, so look out for that. Finally, we've got the gallbladder, and this is where the bile is stored before it's finally released into the small intestines. Okay, time for the quick questions. Pause the video and give them a go, and then press play when you want to mark them. Ready? Number one, match the organ to its function and location in the digestive system. First we've got the gallbladder, and this is responsible for the storage of bile. It's this tiny little green one over here. The large intestine is then responsible for the absorption of water, 
and it's the big pink spongy looking one on the outside. And finally, the pancreas is for the production of digestive enzymes and it's this little leaf-like looking one here. Just a note to make sure that all of your labels do touch the organ they're describing. Two, which acid is found in the stomach? This is hydrochloric acid, which can also be written as HCl, but if you do write it with the symbols, please make sure that you're careful with the letters. H and C need to be capitals, and L needs to be lowercase. And three, how is the small intestine adapted for its function? Well, we'll start by describing its function. The small intestine has the function of digesting food and absorbing the resulting small soluble food molecules. Now let's go into the adaptations. It's adapted for this by having a large surface area created by villi and microvilli. It also has a good blood supply and a short diffusion distance to the blood vessels. We can highlight the three adaptations that you should have in your answer like this. All right, how did you do in the questions? Digesting just wouldn't work properly without enzymes. Click here to learn more about those. And if you find this useful, please consider subscribing. You'll find loads more videos to help you out with your GCSE science. Thanks and bye.